Lesson 4, Reincarnation. In previous lessons, we have studied the history of Spiritism. We studied the, the only and sole principle that is the main foundation of uh, the Spiritist thought, which is the existence of God. Then, the consequent immortality of the soul. And now, we are studying reincarnation. When we think about reincarnation, we are talking about a word that redefines the concept of a single existence. Because if we take the dictionary, the etymology of the word reincarnation means to come again. The, word, the, the, the term re means to come again, whereas the term incarnate from the Latin incarnatus means to come in the flesh, to make flesh. Carnal means flesh, which means that we are supposed to come again in the flesh, in the body. But how does that happen? Is it only spiritism that created this? Not actually. Kardec mentioned in all of his books that spiritism has never created anything new, but it put together knowledge, the wisdom of the universe that we come to know in many different philosophies in one single compacted group of principles, well organized, that offer a framework that shall help us live a better life and rebuild a new society, a better society. And that begins with the reincarnation. If we take history of humankind, even beyond Jesus, we get to know that reincarnation is in the ancient wisdom. Ancient societies such as the Egyptians, such as the Greeks, such as the Romans, they always talked about reincarnation. And here we are to bring it back to our modern times and see how this can be a consequence of divine justice. If we take, for example, the Gospel. Jesus, he said in uh, Matthew chapter 11, verses 12 to 15, from the day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing, and forceful men lay hold of it. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you're willing to accept, he is the Elijah who was to come. He was, he has the ears, he who has ears, let him hear. This was one of the passages that Jesus mentioned about the fact that we can come again with a different name, same traits, but somewhat a, a new personality, the same spirit reincarnated. At the time, people didn't use the terminology reincarnation. It is a somewhat modern terminology, as much as, for example, spiritism. When you see the word spiritism in the Bible, it wasn't created before 1857, when Kardec was the first one to create this word spiritism. Spiritism was never a word before then, so when you read the Bible, for example, and you see the word spiritism, it was an insertion made in modern times, in less than 150 years ago. So, basically, if we take other passages from the Gospel, we're going to see that not only John the Baptist was Elijah reincarnated, but we are going to see in other passages that Jesus mentioned that we should be born again in water. And what does it mean? It means not the renewal of the mind and spirit only. It means the opportunity to join our in collaboration with matter. And in this collaboration, we shall progress. That's the ultimate goal, because if we take a look on the concept of reincarnation, and revisit the concept of one life, what is the logic of having a single life to learn everything that we need to learn? It's not logical. 
If we take a look at the diversity of uh, knowledge that is around us, we ask how can we poss possibly grasp the grandeur of life if we go one day to school. So reincarnation is the possibility of coming and going to school every day. As many days as needed, many different levels. Some of us think, well, but why does it take that long for us to learn something? How do we know that something is taking that long? What do we know before this lifetime? It's a very short vision if we think that we're making mistakes now the whole life and it's a lot. What is one life of a hundred years compared to eternity? Nothing. And as many lives as needed for us to master some skills in terms of our moral growth and intellectual at the same time. Remembering that when we mention intellectual, we talk about emotional intelligence, spiritual intelligence, not only the intellectual one. So the alarming differences that we see all around in our society, not only in America, but in our planet throughout times, we ask, where did those come from? How could the those experiences come in one lifetime, what would be divine justice to allow some of us to be born in deep misery and others in great wealth? Those are experiences of a single lifetime, but not only. It's one experiencing many. And we need many different experiences not only because it's karma, people who are poor or who are uh, undergoing problems, they think, well, I must have done something wrong in a previous life. Not necessarily. Some of the experiences we undergo are a needed experience. So we learn how to be more patient, more faithful, more tolerant, kinder, loving, gentle, and also to exercise our intelligence because we need to progress. Not all difficulties we experience is the result of karma, of the law of action and reaction, as we say in Spiritism. And that's the reason why we say the only way to understand alarming differences and the way that we would learn new lessons and repair previous mistakes would be if we had the different opportunities, which is only and solely logically explained in the plurality of the existences. When we talk about reincarnation, we are talking about God's justice and uh, mercy. Uh, despite what many people say, some people, they don't like the concept of reincarnation because of their pride. They don't like the fact that we could be born in a different country, in a different circumstance, among different people. And uh, they are very uh, stressed out by that concept. But not because the concept doesn't exist, because it gives us a different dimension of life. And when people are short-minded, they can't grasp the grandeur of life and God's mercy in the deep justice and wisdom when God gives us opportunities such as to reincarnate as many lives as possible. And uh, that is the only way to, to understand why we're different, why we have different talents, different moral qualities, virtues, because when we see someone who already mastered something it's not because this person is wiser or smarter simply because this person was created like that. It is because this person has experiences that we don't have yet. But we will get there because we are all children of God. We are probably, we were probably created at a different time by our Creator. We've lived different experiences. 
How can you compare someone who has been cooking every day and the quality of their wonderful meals with someone who has never cooked before? So you can't feel that you are a failure just because you don't bring the same results. We need to give ourselves different opportunities. And this is in the concept of reincarnation. So when we talk about reincarnation, we are going to talk about the evolution of spirit. As many reincarnations as needed for the spiritual principle to evolve through each kingdom in nature, from mineral to vegetable, animal, they also have spiritual principles, not souls though, although they have very spirit. Information, we're going to get to know in chapter 14 of the book Genesis by Kardec, that each and every step of our evolution before human kingdom, we are forming the organization of our spiritual body in such a way that when we get to human level, then we are souls, we are spirits, we already have, as we say, a human spiritual body. In that sense, we never regress. That's when people tell us about metempsychosis. Metempsychosis, my friends, the concept that we may reincarnate in an animal's body is an absurd because Based on the concept that we only progress, how can you store all those memories, all those big gigabyte files in our spiritual body, and then come back in bodies that were in one step before us and, and live in an animal's body? It's impossible, because logically speaking, we're talking about a mind system that holds a dynamic, a frequency of thought that would burn, literally burn, the system of the, the body of an animal because it can't hold that capacity. Our human files don't run in the brain of animals. It's a different step. It's one step before where we are. So it's the same as nowadays we talk about computers, our hard drives. If you are talking about a, an XP system, files that run on XP or Windows Vista nowadays, and then you try to run those files in a previous version, it's never, never going to happen because the capacity cannot hold the system that we, the system cannot hold the capacity that we are providing at this time. So we never regress. We bless the animals because they are evolving, but we are just saying that once we are in the human kingdom, we can never go back and experience lives in the human, in the animal kingdom. It's only forward, always progressing. Remember, animal evolution, spirit evolution, human kingdom evolution. So what is the aim of reincarnation? Why do we need to reincarnate? In the Spirit's book, Question and Answer 167, we got to know that one of the first aims is to purify ourselves. And then we ask, oh, wow, purification, what is that all about? Actually, the root meaning, the root meaning of the word purification means opposite of selfishness. It's not about being dirty and getting ourselves clean. No, we are not dirty, we are not dirty. We are evolving from being a selfish self-centered person to becoming more centered in the community's needs, the overall needs, not only ours. This is why we need to come back as many times as possible in the flesh to learn how to be less self-centered. Be centered, 
mindful, but not self-centered. We need to be loving-centered. We need to be compassionate. We need to master the ability of thinking more about the needs of others and less about ours. And also to redress previous mistakes. That's one other reason why we reincarnate. It's also natural that we make mistakes. Many of us are so punishing when we make mistakes. And I always ask why. Because if making mistakes were that horrible, God would never allow us to make mistakes. If we are allowed to make mistakes, it's because it's a part of nature to learn, to get to the right path, sometimes by going through the wrong ones. So instead of punishing ourselves, we should forgive ourselves and give ourselves another opportunity. No matter how hard it is, but we should never punish ourselves because of wrong choices. They were not wrong once they were thought to be right. And now we are redressing them. And we reincarnate to affect human progress. To progress. There is no other way. So when we reincarnate, we say, this is the way we reincarnate. We can never forget that every time we as spirits, connected to our spiritual body, named perispirit, in spiritism, when we are about to reincarnate, the perispirit of each one of us connects to the first cell in the human body at conception time. At conception, we have the connection of the spirit with matter. And in that regard, the perispirit's immersion in the vital fluid, this vital energy that gives life to matter, grows and gradually materializes itself in such a way that we get a fully materialization of the spirit in the flesh. So many, many of us are like, oh, I want to see phenomena, I want to see materialization of spirits. There you go. Every time a baby is born, boom, you have the materialization of a spirit. So no big deal because we're spirits connected to matter. And uh, that connection happens at conception. The implications are that whenever we make an abortion, we are cutting that opportunity short for that spirit. Again, no, no judgments, just facts. And of course, if you know anyone who has um, um, commi made abortion, what is the solution once they find out that they have cut short the opportunity for those spirits to reincarnate? Have other children, adopt them, or love the children of other people. We feel the love is the only way to redress previous uh, choices that now we found out that are, were not very wise. What are the evidences for reincarnation? Many are they. Past life readings, hypnotic regressions, déjà vu, dreams and nightmares, illnesses, and drugs, how many people when they get ill, what happens is that the body gets weak and the perispirit, when the body is weaker, it expands the spiritual body. And in the spiritual body, we're going to see very soon, holds the memories of all lives. And when our perispirit is expanded, then what happens, some memories pop up. And then some people when they are ill, you talk to them and you say, oh, they are hallucinating. They are talking about things that don't make any sense. Well, actually, some memories from previous lives are coming to the surface. Some drugs can actually induce that kind of state. Sometimes when we med meditate, we can have some flashbacks or strong emotions. Like sometimes we are among relatives and we are talking to them and you say, why did you say that to me? And, you, and they say, I, I don't know. It just came out of the blue. And there you go. Strong emotions can induce that state of 
inducing past life's memory. And spontaneous flashes can happen to all of us. And as Ian Stevenson said, previous life's experiences and those memories can come up, especially in young children. And this is one of the books we recommend by the Dr. Ian Stevenson, Where Reincarnation and Biology Intersect. He brings a lot of scientific studies on birthmarks, like this case, this man, when he was a teenager, he had a birthmark on his chest, and the memories confirmed that in a neighbor city, he was actually the man named uh, Maharam, who had uh, been shot exactly at that point and had the same history. They didn't know each other, of course, because one was dead before the other one was born, but Jan Stevenson very thoroughly investigates the case and shows to us that deep in our biology, we can have the, the footprints of previous lives' memories. How can we explain that? Only if we have a spiritual body. So the spiritual body or our perispirit, which envelops the spirit, that's why it's named perispirit, it's connected to our physical body and it's actually in the perispirit where we store all of our memories, as Leon Denis says. In his book, uh, in Portuguese it's named after death, but now we have its version in English here and hereafter, was published 18, 50, 1897. He says, every action, every thought is stored in our spiritual body. Think now about the implications of this, this fact. So each reincarnation is certainly a fresh start. So that's why we place a lot of importance on childhood. And humankind is just finding out the reasons why it's so important to redefine our lives when we are just born. The life that just comes in a baby form is fresh, open. The body, the, the brain is plastic, meaning it's moldable. Anything that we teach our children later, it's going to have great impact in their adulthood. We ourselves have done research at that level at the University of Maryland, and we found out that actually our biology is greatly impacted by simple things we do in, the, in, in critical time in our first years of life. So in that sense, we would like to remind everyone that each and every incarna reincarnation is prepared in the spiritual realm by good and caring spirits. There is, as Andrea Lewis says in his books, there is a, an institute in the spiritual realm that takes care of the planning of each and every reincarnation. Sometimes people who are reincarnating are aware of it, others they aren't. And in that regard, during the time that we are in the spirit realm awaiting a new reincarnation, we are in the state of what we call errant spirits. And not meaning that we make mistakes, we're just waiting for a new opportunity. During that time, we may make courses, we may undergo trainings of different kind to make sure we succeed in our next reincarnation. But remember, my friends, despite all of it, we grow slowly, gradually, there is no jump in nature. We don't jump from one degree to the next. We grow little by little. We wish sometimes that we would just skip one step and go to the next one, but it doesn't happen. So in that regard, the implications of reincarnation are so many. It is so beautiful to recognize the implications of living many lives. It actually strains family times ties. Many people think, oh my gosh, what about my loved ones? What's going to happen? Nothing. We're just going to be 
strongly attached to one another in a loving way. Even if we are born in different familial groups, we're expanding our family. We are engendering a universal love through reincarnation, as the Dalai Lama says, and we're going to learn more tolerance, knowing that there is no racial differences. Religious and social status don't make us any different, because after all, we can be born to more in a different country, in a different cultural, religious, social status, and that's not going to make us different in our essence. It's going to be a needed experience, so we grow and expand in our spiritual awareness. So it truly brings a sense of brotherhood, as Helena Bravatsky said, and raises the sense of renewal. And actually, when we have the true meaning of reincarnation inside of ourselves, we elongate the time sense meaning that when we undergo problems in this life, we're going to feel, well, they're just going to pass. Why am I going to trouble myself that much with these problems? So reincarnation is truly a very uplifting concept that Spiritism and other philosophies brings to us. And this is how we end the lesson number four, awaiting for a new opportunity to deepen this concept on reincarnation.